Welcome to the course on real analysis. In the previous lectures, we have seen the definition of a neighborhood and several examples of a neighborhood. And after that, we have defined what the open set means in a general matrix based setup. And we have proved all the neighborhoods are open sets. In this lecture, we are going to define what is the limit point and an uh, isolated point. Then we will see some relation between a neighborhood and a limit point. Let us get into the lecture. Here, a limit point. In order to define a limit point, we are taking a point from the metric space X. Therefore, in a metric space, we may take any point P. Okay? And this P may be called as a limit point. For what is said to be a limit point of E. So, in the metric space, we will have to consider some subset E as well. But as of now, from the definition, we do not have any guarantee that this P lies inside E or lies outside E, lies on the boundary of E. We do not have any information about it. Plainly, they have given that we have to take some point in the metric space. Okay, that point is said to be a limit point if every neighborhood of every neighborhood. This is quite important one. When we define open sets, we said that there exists a neighborhood of that point which is completely contained in the set. Whereas in order to define a limit point, what we are saying? We are saying that every neighborhood, which means all possible neighborhoods of that point P has to satisfy a certain condition and the condition is it must contain a point of E other than P. Okay. So, if you choose any radius, uh, if you fix any radius and try to find out the all possible neighborhoods of this point, in these neighborhoods, we have a point other than this P and which is also a member of E. Sometimes we have a point outside E as well, but we do not we don't do not need to bother about it because we must have in the definition it is given that we must have a point other than p and that point has to be a member of e okay here let us see if we fix a radius to be a quite larger one we get some points of e inside this neighborhood but when we fix a radius a smaller one we do not get any points of e therefore it is this point is not a limit point of this set here I have taken a point on the boundary but still now I do not have any guarantee that whether I have this this boundary is included in the set or not here let us see the possibilities if I choose a big radius I am getting points of E that is well and good even if I choose a very small radius whether I am getting or not it is a question mark yes in this case we are getting so this point is also a limit point of E Okay, if I choose a point here, 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 in all these cases I get this to be a limit point of E. From the definition and from this diagram, we can see one thing that is a set may have more than one limit point. Sometimes infinite number of limit points may also be there for a set. With this understanding of a limit point, now let us get into the next definition that is isolated point. Here, in order to define an isolated point, we have to take a point of the set. Okay, We have taken a point of the set and we examine that whether it is being a limit point to the set or not. And finally, we found that that is not a limit point of the set. If a point of a set is not being a limit point of a set, then that is called as an isolated point. Okay. So, a isolated point is a point of a set which is not a limit point of the set. So, we may have a question that whether what happens when we call a point of a set is a limit point of a set. Do we have any relation for these things and do we have any definitions for these things? Yes, of course we will. We have and we will explore those things when the course is proceeding. Now, let us uh, prove a result concerning the limit point of the neighborhood. That tells you if you are taking a point, uh, if 
something is your limit point, then the neighborhood of that limit point will have infinite number of elements. Okay, let me state the uh, result that is theorem. If P is a <coughs> limit point of E, then every neighborhood of P contains infinitely many points of E. Here, whatever may be the given uh, result or a theorem, the one thing that we have to always remember is that the results that we are going to prove or that we have will not violate will not violate the basic definition of such things okay now here we will see what is given in the definition and what is given in the theorem statement in the definition it is given that uh, the neighborhood every neighborhood of that point must contain at least one point other than that and that has to be a member of e okay that they have said that we must have at least one point whether they have not specified whether we will have a finite number of points or infinite number of points. But in this theorem, what we are going to prove is that those neighborhoods will not contain exactly one point other than P, which is a member of E. We will have infinite number of points of E. Okay. In order to prove that, uh, how are we going to proceed? As of now, we know the definition of E and we know that uh, definition of a neighborhood. Neighborhood of the point P with radius R is nothing but the collection of points in the metric space such that the distance of P and Q has to be less than R. This is the definition of a neighborhood. Fine. Now, this P is given to be the limit point of E. So, in the neighborhood of P, sum of the points or maybe at least one point is a member of E and we will have to prove it consists of infinitely many points of E. Suppose, let us take, suppose uh, NR of P contains finite number of points of E. Okay, I don't know what those points are, so let me name them to be Q1, Q2, etc. Qn, which is a member of NR of P, and these are all where these are um, these are members of E as well. Okay, these members of E is present inside this neighborhood. We'll have to prove it has infinitely many points. Now we have taken it has only finite number of points, which means we are going in a contrapositive approach. Okay, so this is that. If this is that, we can identify these values, right? We can measure this distances. And I am going to find the minimum of these distances and I am going to take that to be some R1. Okay, what about this R1, whether it is positive, negative or zero. By the definition of a limit point, we have a point other than P, which means all these points, that is your Q1 is not the same as P, your Q2 is not the same as P. In a similar way, till your Q1, they are not equals P. So, if these two quantities are equal, then your distance is zero. If your distance is zero, then these two quantities will be equal. Since they are different, all these quantities are positive quantities. We are not getting zero among this. Now, we are finding the minimum of these positive quantities. So, this value is also positive. That tells you that your R1 is bigger than zero okay now we will have to find out a neighborhood of p with this radius 
okay it consists of what we have said that only these points of e are member are being the members of the neighborhood okay no other points other than these n quantities are members of this neighborhood now we are after finding those points from e which are present in the neighborhood we are collecting we are measuring the distances and we find the minimum of these distances and with the help of this distance we are finding another neighborhood what happens you just see uh, we have chosen the minimum distance to be r1 but we are trying to find out this is going to collect the points in x such that t of p comma q has to be less than r1 among this n quantities the minimum is r1 but you are trying to measure a distance which is less than that r1 therefore this contains no points of e if you have chosen the maximum distance then your these n quantities will be covered in this neighborhood but you have chosen the minimum distance therefore no these n quantities will not come in this neighborhood okay and here what you have said said is that only these n quantities are the members of the neighborhood which are taken from e it may have any other points but that those points are not members of e so finally this concludes what it has no points of e it concludes p is not a limit point limit point of what p is not a limit point of e but it is given that p is a limit point of e so we arrive at a contradiction therefore every neighborhood of p contains infinitely many points of e in this lecture what we have seen is that we have seen the definition of a limit point and an isolated point then we prove uh, every neighborhood of uh, limit point contains infinitely many points of the set okay thank you for watching this lecture if you have any queries you can post it in the comment box that will be clarified within 24 hours of time thank you